How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at All Eight Eyes, issue number three. This is uh, the penultimate issue. Issue number four will be the last one in this series. Unless it sells a ton, then you'll get a sequel series or something, but for now, the next one's going to end it. And this is really good for a penultimate issue. You get to see a lot of the characters push to their stress points and how they react to it in different ways. We also open up with the return to that abandoned school building and that giant monster spider fight. Always cool to open on a strong action sequence and it gives us that spider bashing that we're really wanting to see. Uh, so that's really cool, and I won't spoil what it is, uh, but in this issue, we finally get Reynolds' origin story, and as far as tragic origin stories goes, this is up there. It's really good. I won't say too much about it, because I want you to go in not knowing much, but yeah, we do get a pretty cool sequence at the end there, so I really do like this issue. It really is hitting the potential that I knew this series could get to, and I guess that's that's one of the things about this book. Um, comics, you have to write them in two different ways. One, you have to write them for month to month. You have to build a readership, and you have to get them interested to come back each and every time. But you also have to write them for the trade crowd, the people that pick up the uh, trade paperback and read multiple issues at once. You have to make sure that it flows through well. Well, the thing with All Eight Eyes is it knew it was going to be a four-issue limited series, so it didn't have to really worry about maintaining a huge readership because it wasn't going to get canceled. They were just going to make four. So with All Eight Eyes, I feel it is really going to be a much better experience reading it as a trade paperback because if I could have got to this point in one sitting, that would be really good. You know, all of a sudden the book's really heating up. It really is written to be read all at once. So in turn, those last couple issues, I really felt like it had something there and I really wanted to see bigger, epicer things. But in turn, I had to wait the one month and then another month and then finally getting to this point. So I think those of you that are reading this in trades are going to have a much better experience. You know, I really do wish those first two had a little more in them for us who are reading them month to month. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole rant, I guess. Uh, anyway, if you guys want to see a little more about this book, I, I will say I think issue three is the strongest so far. Sorry this was a little late. I'll try to get to four really quickly. Um, but anyway, if you want to see a little bit more about this book, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera, show you guys a little bit of the story and a little bit of the art. No major spoilers, but I will dig in a little deeper, just a little bit. Anyway, without further ado, to the close-up camera. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at All Eight Eyes, issue number three. Uh, let's bring this closer to the camera. We can see the Dark Horse logo and the $3.99 price. Pretty good, especially for not being a big two comic. Sometimes those can go up quite high. And I do love this cover of him waking up from a dream. It's actually tied to some of the content in the book. And it is reminiscent of, say, like the alien facehugger or something from John Carpenter's The Thing. Overall, I really like this cover, and it has this fun, big, open space for the All Eight Eyes logo. Personally, I, I don't know, I kind of would want to center it a little bit more, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, the back we get the spiders again. Not sure how well they show up on camera, but 00311. Anyway, inside the book, you'll see the credits page. Written by Stevie Fox, with art by Peter Kowalski. Again, no previously on. Really wish they had done it. But still, the giant pink spider under the bridge. That's fun. Anyway, after that is the, the story proper. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers. I do want to say my piece on a few plot points. 
do a little bit of analysis and show you guys a little bit of the art. Again, no major spoilers, but let's take a tiny peek inside. Uh, we open up with the girl from Parks and Recreation waking up our main hero, and the main guy sees that uh, Reynolds is still very much in the heat of battle. Yeah, that's really cool. I really do love giant spider fighting, and in this opening sequence, we get a fair bit of it. Uh, he, of course, has to be slapped to, to get fully woken up, uh, but once he gets woken up, he does have a plan. Uh, unfortunately, the plan will involve attacking the giant spider directly. Uh, quite the risky move, uh, but uh, let's see if it works. Uh, Reynolds, of course, will be like, don't do that, idiot kid, and we will get a bit of the tension between them. As I said, though, this book works really well when it's doing what it's, you know, big catches. It's show us giant spider battles, and it's really fun. So here we can see the book is really heating up for that penultimate issue, and I'm really wanting to see what happens next. Um... I won't spoil what happens in this fight, but needless to say, tensions are going to rise because he did pull quite the move there, and uh, Vinny is going to see if he can return to the real world. He's going to take his friend up on uh, crashing on her couch, but the friend turns and we get scary spider face. So maybe once you've been in this far, it is kind of hard to turn back. A few things happen in this issue. The dream sequence, as hinted by the cover, is extended with a really fun double-page splash, and we do get a lot of the characters wondering about what world they will stay in, you know? So, lots of really fun, interesting stuff. Issue 3, the book is starting to heat up and boil. I do wish that uh, there were more intense moments in the last two issues, but riding for four we can see it's pacing for four, and in turn, three is the best so far, and I really can't wait till that last issue comes out. Um, I'll get the video for that up a lot quicker. Sorry, this one turned out to be kind of late. Uh, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. How about my Dark Horse Comics playlist? Where you can see my reviews for other books, including the first two in the series. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.